Hi students, welcome. Um, Miss Ng here. We are going to start chapter 7 yeah, today. Chapter 7 of uh, Form 4 and Math, that's statistics. Alright, it's actually a very easy chapter. Uh, it, it doesn't really require a lot of um, um, thinking or a lot of lengthy calculation. Well, except maybe for variance or interquartile range. But um, uh, generally, it's quite an easy chapter. So let, let me give you an overview of this chapter first, right? Because there are quite a lot of formulas and uh, students find that it, the formulas can be confusing. When do you use which formula and all that? All right. So um, now statistics, the first thing is you will learn what we call measures of central tendency. Okay. So the first thing is measures of um, central tendency okay what are they what are these these are the common stuff that you have learned previously when you were in uh, form 3 um, you learned how to find mean you've learned how to find mode and you've learned how to find median all right. Generally, these are the three things that you will be uh, learning. These are called the measures of central tendency. How to find mean, mode, and median, all right, of data. Now, the difference in uh, in this chapter seven statistics in form four and math compared with your form three is that your uh, data. There are two types of data. That's very important for you to. Uh, realize yeah, there are two types of data to find mean, mode, and median. You may have to find them from two different type of data one we call them ungroup ungrouped data another one would be grouped data okay what does ungrouped and grouped data means yeah ungrouped data are basically the data that you have been doing all along let's say um find let's for example right find the median mode and uh mean from this set of data okay an example would be like this find find mean mode and median from the set of data 10 9 uh, 5 and 3 and 9 and 11 okay given to you a set of data 1 2 3 4 5 6 numbers find the mean mode median from this six number that's an ungrouped uh, data okay ungrouped data can also be in a table form i'm sure you have seen a table formed ungrouped data uh, let's say let's say these are marks okay and uh, these are number of um, students right so okay so then maybe you have marks like um, 10 and uh, 11 and uh, 12 and 13 okay so let's say two students got this five students got 11 and four have 12 and uh, one got 13 right so this is also called a set of ungrouped data except that it has been put into a frequency table this is called a frequency table yeah normally frequency table is put when uh, you have quite a lot of data you know you have two people getting 10 marks five people getting 11 marks four people getting 12 marks and one people getting um, 13 marks so you cannot be writing one line you know the entire line there are like 9 10 12 12 numbers here okay sometimes this data can get to maybe 50 or 100 so you cannot be writing 50 numbers you know or 100 numbers right so you put them in a frequency table which will be much easier yeah but um, uh, notice this this okay what you have here whether you put it randomly like this as a line or whether you put it in the form of a table over here these these are all called ungrouped data okay and you should know how to find mean mode and medium from ungrouped data this because you've learned this in form 3 now the new thing that you're learning in chapter 7 here in ad math is grouped data group data means this um, sometimes sometimes you uh, you cannot get this kind of data sometimes you know marks cannot be just from 10 to 13 right let's say what are the marks what are the average marks or the marks of um, your ad math score in your class you know so you get people scoring you know in group data you may have um, a bigger table like this okay and uh, marks okay and a number of students right number of students here so uh, let's 
draw it out. So marks for add math, right? You get people scoring from between um maybe maybe thirty to uh thirty nine. And uh, you get people scoring maybe from uh, 40 to 49. And uh, you have, okay, then you have to obviously lengthen this. Maybe it's 50 to 59. And um, let's say 60 to 69. Okay, so these are, this is called group data. So let's say, and, and so forth, I don't know, you continue, but uh, I won't finish it just for you to understand it. Let's say, uh, let's say 10 students got this. Uh, let's say 15 and let's say uh, 20 and let's say uh, uh, 9 okay let's say all right so this is just a distribution of marks for students so what is the difference between group and ungrouped data I hope you can see it from here the difference is very obvious there is a range of numbers here okay sorry there's a there's a range of numbers over here you know, the data is from 30 to 39 40 to 49 50 to 59 It's no longer one single data Okay, so these are called group data and uh, you are required to find mean, mode and median from group data as well. Okay, so obviously the method to find mean, mode and median from group data will be different from ungrouped. There will be some um, extra stuff that you have to do before you can find the mean, mode, median. Alright, okay, so that's measures of central tendency. Now the next thing that you will be learning in chapter seven, there are only two two subtopics, yeah, two smaller part, two parts. Okay, the next thing that you will be learning is called measures of dispersion. All right, measures of dispersion. Okay, measures of dispersion stands for four things. Four things, yeah. Uh, the first is range. And then interquartile range. Okay, don't worry about them. I will explain all of them in detail as we go through the worksheet. This is just an overview of the entire chapter. Okay, and uh, the next one is variance. And the other one is standard deviation. Right, standard deviation. So there are a lot of formulas over here. Yeah, four things. These are called measures of dispersion. Um, the way you find them is the similar to mean, mode, and median, just that you use different formulas. Okay, and they of course they have the different meaning. All right, these are the four things that you will have to find, and you will have to find them from grouped and ungrouped data as well. Yeah, so same thing here you from meaning to say from the same same data let's say this these two data here you are asked you will be asked to find measures of dispersion as well that means right from one group of data you can find seven things actually mean mode median range interquartile range variance and standard deviation you can be asked to find any one or two of these things yeah so the set of data can either be grouped or ungrouped that's all all right and the last part of statistics all right the last part after you have learned all these things how to find these seven stuff these seven things the last part of statistics is this you will be asked to do comparison all right comparison all right you'll be asked to do comparison and you will be asked to do effects of changes on the set of data on the set of data Right, so comparison would mean this: you're given two sets of data, then and then they will ask you which one is more consistent, which one has, um, <clears throat> which one is more consistent, which one is more suitable, uh, or they will give you a set of data, and they will ask you what if I change some of the data? What if I add nine to to this set of data? What if I take out eleven? You know, what if I add one more student inside? What if I, uh, 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 what if I add some numbers into the data? What will happen to the mean, mode, median, range, interquartile range, variance, or standard deviation. That is called effects of changes. All right, and then that's it. This is all there is on statistics. Okay, so it's not a very big chapter. You just have to be very clear of what you're going to learn. So the first part of chapter 7, I'm going to teach you measures of central tendency. Then we'll move on to measures of dispersion. All right, so let's go through the worksheet, shall we?